welcome to this Alaska kitchen. This is where we share family meals here in our home, hoping to inspire you to gather and cook homemade meals. It is not even nine o'clock in the morning yet, but I am going to start some bread. This is our amazing four loaf white bread recipe. I'm going to be making some chicken noodle soup tonight for dinner because it is super rainy and cold outside. 44 degrees this morning. But I also want to deliver bread to a couple people that we need to say thank you to. And so I'm going to start it right now. It kind of takes a few hours. Let's get it going. Hopefully I don't mess this recipe up. Bennett is my bread maker. He is my second son, um, but he's in school, so I have to do it. <laughs> I usually help him, but he does the majority of it. So hopefully I don't ruin Bennett's record of making really good bread that everybody loves. I do love this recipe because it's super simple. I got it for him so that he could feel confident making bread. So if you want a really easy bread making recipe, this is it. I am using a Bosch mixer. Um, these are the best for bread making, but you can also knead it by hand if you need to, or you can just mix it in whatever mixer you have. This is actually my mom's mixer from when I was a little girl. So these things are a beast. We're gonna start out four cups water, four cups flour. But first, let's say good morning to Luna. She's standing guard over here. Good morning, Luna. Yes, how are you? Oh, yes, you need to say hi. You need to say hello, yes. Okay, you need to say hello to all your fans. Are you having a good morning? Okay. Four cups flour, and then four cups warm water. Let that mix. I feel like every time I start one of these videos, I have to go refill my stuff. It's never full. I have to go get some out of the garage. Some more flour. Okay. Four cups water. Mix this together until it's all just wet. Next up, we add two heaping tablespoons of quick rise yeast. Add a little bit more. Half a cup of sugar to feed that yeast. And then three tablespoons oil. I'm using avocado oil or you can use vegetable oil. Once that is good and mixed, you can add your salt. You don't want to add the salt too soon because you want the yeast some time to feed. We honestly could leave this for a few minutes and let it get really good and bubbly, but I haven't found that to be necessary for this recipe. This is one tablespoon of salt. This is making four loaves of bread. Next up, we're gonna add five to seven cups of flour. It's five to seven cups because you just have to watch the dough. When it's really starting to pull off the sides and make a good dough ball, then you know that you have enough. I'm not sure I even have five to seven cups here, but we'll start with that and then I'll have to go refill. Okay. try and pull away from the side, so we're getting close. If I stop it here, you can see that it's starting to clear off the sides. It's not sticking to the sides anymore. I think somehow we had just the perfect amount of flour. I'm gonna add just a little bit more and I think we're gonna be good. Now that it's completely pulled off the sides, we're gonna let it knead for five minutes or you could knead it by hand at this point. But I'm gonna let the machine do the work because my arms are so sore from working out this week. I don't even know if I could knead this dough without like being in tears. I realized I did not use my triceps this uh, summer. We did a lot of hiking, biking, camping, running around, but I obviously didn't use my triceps because after one short little 30 minute workout, 
I can barely move my arms. <laughs> The dough needed for five minutes, it looks great. I'm gonna oil this bowl. Then I'm gonna get my hands wet so that the dough doesn't stick to my hands. Just gonna shape it into a ball. I find the less you touch it, the better, but get it kind of nice and shaped. All right, there's our ball. Into the bowl. Now, if your house is warm, feel free to leave it out and let it rise double in size. I like to put a damp rag over the top so it doesn't dry out the dough. Our house is chilly. It's 44 degrees today. I'm going to turn the oven onto the lowest setting, which is like 170 degrees. Once it gets up to temperature, I'm gonna turn the oven off, but that will just make it a nice warm place for this bread to rise. Because our house is chilly. Now I gotta go clean up the flour mess that I made. But <laughs> when you're dealing with a huge bag of flour, that's to be expected. I'd be more surprised if I didn't make a mess than the fact that I did make a mess. I tried to be careful, but it's just hard. The bread dough has risen beautifully here in the oven. It is time to put it in loaf pans and set it aside for its second rise. It smells so good. Just gonna form them into loaves. Get them all tucked in. And make a pretty loaf. Oops. I'm gonna set these back into the warm oven. I'm not gonna turn it on again, but it'll be a nice place for them to rise because it's just kinda chilly in our kitchen. It's chilly in our house. We've entered that part of the year where it's not warm. I am gonna cover the loaves with this dry cloth. I don't want to use a wet one this time. When I tried to do it with a wet one, it's stuck. So let's do a dry one this time. I'm gonna give them about an hour and then I'm gonna pull them out and let them finish rising up on the counter while I preheat the oven to 400 degrees. While the bread rises, I'm gonna head out to the garden. I'll take you along, show you the last of our fall garden and pick the rest of the veggies that might go good in today's chicken noodle soup. Sorry, there's not more to show you in the garden. We have just been picking it when things are ripe, when we've needed things, when we're ready for dinner. And I've been terrible at pulling out the camera and showing you. It's not our best garden, but we really have enjoyed everything we've pulled out of it. Cauliflower, broccoli, squash, zucchini, celery, cabbages, lettuce. We really did enjoy eating out of our garden, even though it's a total mess of weeds. So here's the garden. It looks like we have a few zucchinis and squash still growing. We have picked most of the cauliflower here. I think maybe actually all of it. Uh, we still do have a few cabbages. We have a really nice green cabbage back there. Another cabbage. And then several things of celery, which we're going to cut some of that for our soup today. We do actually have some pretty good lettuce still growing I can cut as well. Uh, no more broccoli. All these new raspberries grew up right here along the edge. 
Even though they're not supposed to be in the garden, they still just keep coming back. I do already have a purple and green cabbage inside in the refrigerator, so I'm not gonna harvest any cabbage yet because they're still okay out here in the garden. But I am gonna grab some zucchini, squash, some celery, and whatever else I see as I walk around. Zucchini. We are still harvesting some beautiful raspberries despite the rain. Lots of jam being made, lots in the freezer for making fruit leathers and smoothies and desserts throughout the winter and spring and summer. But always have to grab a handful if we're out here. Raspberries are really, really expensive in Alaska, so I do try and savor these couple weeks when we have such good raspberries and just enjoy them fresh as often as possible. I see some good ones right here. Gotta come get them. Over here we have our potato patch. We are still waiting for it to have a hard freeze at night before we pick the potatoes. I do want to grab a couple carrots and add them to our soup. I have very low expectations for our carrots because they kind of got overshadowed by the potatoes. This is the first time we've ever done them right with the potatoes and we will not do that again. Yeah, pretty small carrots. Oh, there's a good one. The last thing I need to grab while I'm out here is several containers of frozen chicken stock to make up our chicken soup. All right, we're all set to go. Ooh, these look good. Here we go, the oven's all preheated. We're gonna put these in. They just bake for 20 minutes, which is incredible. And we're gonna have some fresh hot bread. Now we add a little butter to the tops. Note to self, I old my pans better. They got a little bit stuck. But that's okay, because then I can taste it. Fresh hot bread. I think I added a little bit too much flour. These didn't rise quite as much as I would have liked to see. That's okay, they're still gonna taste excellent. So here is the harvest from our garden for today's soup. I think it's gonna be really tasty. This celery, although it is super, super tiny, has more scent and flavor than any celery I've ever gotten from the store. I keep all the leaves, I put them in the freezer, and the next time I make chicken stock, I will add these leaves to it, along with some onions and things, and it makes amazing chicken stock, but all these little tiny pieces at the bottom we're gonna add to our soup and they're super, super tasty. Thank you. 
look at all those beautiful veggies. I am gonna chop up a couple extra carrots. Those carrots were very dinky. Well, I wanted to make homemade egg noodles to go with this soup, but I just realized I don't have any eggs. I gotta go pick up all the boys from school. I'm gonna see if I can swing through and pick up some eggs so that we can make our homemade egg noodles to go with this soup. It just makes it that much better. I'm also gonna be taking a loaf of bread to my neighbors. If you saw my apple processing video, they were so kind to let us pick apples. I'm gonna take them this and a jar of our raspberry freezer jam to say thank you for letting us pick their apples. That's one of the reasons why I made four loaves today. One will be for dinner, the other three I'm going to deliver to different people. Well, I picked up the boys. I did not have time to stop and get eggs. So we're just gonna use regular noodles, but I will link my favorite egg noodle recipe down in the recipe below. I just roll it out with a rolling pin, cut it into small strips, and add it right at the end of my soup. And they're kind of like little tiny dumplings, but we're just gonna have to add other noodles today because Mark's bringing home eggs and he's gonna get here too late to make the noodles, I think. <laughs> okay, let's get started on this soup. Add in my chicken broth. This is boiled down. It looks delicious. Lots of veggies. Now I'm just waiting for Mark to come home. I did end up adding a little bit of this better than bouillon because I had tasted the broth and it seemed a little bit weak. Uh, it has boiled down. Now I'm just waiting for Mark to bring home a rotisserie chicken so I can add a little bit of that into it. I also have these noodles from last night's spaghetti. I cut them up really little. I'm gonna warm them up and then the boys can add these to their spaghetti. I prefer it just to be veggies, so. We have some awesome chicken noodle soup. And I'm worn out. All right, we got a chicken here. We're gonna chop some of this up, add it to our soup. This is the cheater way, but sometimes it's just nice. Luna smells the chicken. And then when the meat is off of this Costco chicken, we will boil these bones and make more broth. So I feel like making chicken soup just kind of is like a circle. We make broth, then we make chicken soup, then we make more broth. Anyways. As we get closer to dinner time, the kitchen becomes a flutter of activity. The boys help set the table, and tonight we all grabbed a bowl of soup and fresh bread from the counter before sitting down to eat. All right, dinner is served. Yum, yum, yum. This is the perfect dinner for the 45 degree fall day that we're having outside. It's rainy, it's cold. This is gonna warm us right up. And just in case you were wondering what I do with this shredded chicken, if you were like, what are you talking about making stock? I put my shredded chicken and a bunch of veggies. I've got carrots. I've got the rest of that celery from the garden. I've got these bigger cabbage leaves that weren't as crisp. I'm sticking them in there. I have all the shredded chicken here so it's ready for soups or salads or anything else that we wanna eat it with this week. So I'm gonna put this on high pressure for about two hours and then just let it self-release. And then we'll have some nice chicken stock to freeze for the next time that we wanna make soup or any other thing that calls for chicken broth. It's just kind of a process I like to go through. It takes very little effort. I do love this little basket that goes in here. That way I can drain the, all the bones and stuff out of it. I'll link this on Amazon just in case you want it. Couldn't live without my Instant Pot. Love this thing. Just in case you wanna make your own chicken broth out of your Costco chicken when you're done. All right, just gonna set it, come back in a couple hours and let it cool overnight. That's it. Really quick before we go, I also wanted to share my favorite pumpkin cookie recipe with you for fall. It makes a ton of cookies and I will be sure to put the recipe down in the description below if you want to make them. These cookies are loaded with spices and turn out very soft and pillowy. These cookies are great plain but they are also fantastic topped with our caramel frosting. Mix it up in a mixer, you won't regret it. 
I am adding several cups of powdered sugar to get the perfect icing consistency for our cookies. These cookies are a huge hit with my family and the families that we shared them with. I even put some away in the freezer for the boys' lunches. They are a perfect fall treat. She came to inspect what mom was doing in the kitchen. Thank you so much for spending time. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna fall over. Thank you so much for spending time in this Alaska kitchen. We're so grateful for each and every one of you. We'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska life. Bye. 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 Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and hit the thumbs up. All right. Bye.